Let me say one thing right now. I want to welcome everybody here, and I'm proud to stand here for one reason. About two years ago, Harold invited me to a reunion meeting in his union hall. So I went to North Bergen, went up in his office, we talked, and Harold said, well, let's go down to the union meeting. So we proceeded to go downstairs. So I went to sit in one of the seats with the members, and Harold said, no, no, you're coming up here. So Harold brought me up on the dais. So the first speaker was Harold. He took Dennis's spot right away. But anyway, Harold gave me an honorary card for the local 1804 and the ILA. And I'm proud of that. So I'm a member now. I carry it in my wallet. I never know when I have to go down to Port Newark and make a shape. <laughs> but I know, me and Harold, we know each other a long time. One thing that I could say about Harold, he never forgot where he came from. Our, everybody looks at Harold as a tough guy. You've saw him before. Get in here, close the doors. <laughs> He's got that voice. And that's the voice you need when you need leadership. But Harold is one of the kindest guys that you can ever meet. What he does for people in need, Harold's there for you. And when I did all my stuff with the hospital, the children's hospital, which I very proud of because we have to understand one thing. I lived my life, and everybody in this room that's older, our children is our future. And if we don't take care of our children, then the future is not going to be the way it should be. And I've been a union person all my life. Harold missed one thing in the beginning. I was a labor first for Local 472, and then I became an operating engineer. Now, I'm in business this month 50 years, and I've been an operating engineer for 50 years, and I'm proud of that. And let me say this, anybody that wants to try to be non-union, they're kidding themselves. Because when you deal with unions, you're dealing with skill, you're dealing with safety, and you have real people working for you. People that you can depend on, and people know what they're doing. And in my business, I deal with maybe 15 different locals, and I get the best, and I treat them the best. <laughs> Now, I'll tell you a little story how I started. I never liked school. I was always in trouble. My father had to go to school, and Mr. Medicaid, the vice president, he says, Joe, the kid don't want to be here. So I stuck it through when I graduated high school. I've always worked. I started my business in 69. I used to work as an operating engineer, come home. Saturdays and Sundays, we did our thing to build the business up. But we were always union. And let me say this. We worked hard, but where you get today is where you want to be. Anybody can do anything. But when you want to work hard, you have to work for it. There's three things in my life. <clears throat> I don't like the word no. I never say no. I either say yes or I say I'm going to look into it and I'll get back to you, whether it's good looking into it. I don't like the word problem. When we have our 6 o'clock meetings on a Wednesday morning, I bring all the superintendents and the project managers, and we have a meeting, and we discuss all the projects we're doing. So one of the superintendents gets up, and he says, well, we have a problem. I said, well, then you don't want to talk to me. Because the only time you have a problem is when you can't get out of that bed in the morning. Then you have a problem. So if you, <laughs> thank you. So if you want to say you have a situation, then we'll take care of it. We'll have a situation which is going to be correct. The third thing, which my friend Harold and myself, we love the United States and we love America. We're proud of it. And the time when all that controversy was going with the flags and who was kneeling, and whatever, they forgot about all the men and women that fought for this country, that that flag wouldn't be flying if it wasn't for those people. 
But then again, they had the freedom to speak. That's what they say. So I was so upset with that. Now, I'm not a tattoo guy, and I have nothing against tattoos. I was so upset, I'm, I ride down 17 South, and there's a tattoo parlor, Mario Bart. So I pulled in, parked my car in the back. I didn't want nobody to see it was at the tattoo, tattoo parlor. So I walked in, and I said to the girl at the desk, I said, I'm here to get a tattoo. She said, okay, well, you have to make an appointment. So I said, well, do I have to make an appointment? Why can't we do it right now? She says, well, you just can't walk in and get a tattoo. So Mario was on the other side. So he gets up. He says, could I help you? I said, yeah, I would like to get a tattoo. I know I don't have an appointment, but what you're going to do is going to take you one hour. So he laughed. He said, what do you want? I said, I don't want an American flag on my right shoulder. And I got the tattoo that day, and Mario did. <laughs> So now I'm proud that it's on me, that I can walk proud to be an American. Now let's get back to Harold Daggett. Harold Daggett is a person that, he's a leader. When I say a leader, he doesn't take a back seat to nothing. He never forgot where he came from, and I never forgot where I came from. We worry about, Harold worries about his members, and I worry about my employees. And without the members in this room, Harold is just a name. Without all my employees, I'm nothing, because I cannot do the job by myself. And I want to thank all my employees, and I want to thank all the members in this room for what you do. And like Harold says in Dennis, and by the way, Dennis, after you spoke, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> so we're going to call Dennis Harold, too. But anyway, it's very important that we respect our members and we respect our employees and respect unions. Unions worked hard to get where they were. And when I was with the operating engineers, it's not like today, you can't really do anything today. When there was a picket line, we were on a picket line and we showed them what it was to win the battle. Today, you can't do that. Today, you got to walk around and do the best you can to change it. Life is too short to worry about things that are not important. You got to worry about your future, you got to worry about your family, and you got to work making tomorrow better than it was today. Harold and myself, we have a little round table, and on the sad days we meet and we solve all the problems in the world. So every once in a while, Harold gets a phone call, and I'm listening to him. No way, that, that guy, I'm telling you, he's not getting that double time. And I'm saying, well, you know, but he, he works Saturdays and other, and he says what he has to say. And I admire him for that. I admire him for that. And all I could say to have a friend like Harold is having a friend for the rest of your life, because he's there. And when he had that operation, I was, like panicking because it happened all of a sudden. And I ran up to the hospital and the man was joking like nothing was happening because he's a man. He doesn't want to be a burden on everybody. He takes care of his family and his second family is the people in this room and he'll never let you down. And when they talk about automation and Harold said he made a commitment to management, well, let me say something. Everybody in this room, please help them make that commitment, because it's important, very important. So in closing, I want to say congratulations to everybody here in the 55th convention. I want to thank Jimmy McNamara for putting this all together and his staff, because he does a great job. And. <laughs> And I would like everybody to stand up and give Dennis another hand of applause. There's a leader. <laughs>